an Indonesian man who was having a lot of death and tried to escape from it. He decided to fake his own death but was viral on social media when he was captured waking up inside his open casket. The man was found by one of the mourners as he lay in the coffin but suddenly people were all struck as he appeared to wake from the dead. The man and his wife paid a van with a casket, telling the driver they need to pick up a body of a deceased family member. The driver said the couple looked in good health when they entered the van. The couple asked for a brief stop at a highway resting area, during which the husband jumped into the casket. The driver noticed that the husband was gone when they resumed their trip on the way to a clinic with the wife, presumably to have the man pronounced dead. But the man was found waking up, not realizing what the chaos of his actions would cause. Pennsylvanian couple accused of faking the birth and death of their baby to scam their family and friends into giving them more than 600 US dollar in donations and gifts. Casey and Geoffrey Lang were both charged with thief by deception. Casey documented her fake pregnancy on Facebook, posting her growing baby bomb and revealed she and her husband were having a boy. Friends hosted a baby shower for the couple and they were given a number of gifts before Casey claimed she needed to be on bed rest for the final two months of her pregnancy. The couple revealed to family and friends that their son, Easton Walt Lang, had been born and they even posted a photo on Facebook of the baby. But Casey and Joffrey revealed soon after that their baby boy had tragically died in the arse after the birth due to respiratory distress syndrome. The couple then created a GoFundMe page to raise funds for the son's funeral and a memorial service was held after the couple said they had cremated their son. But one of Casey's friends was suspicious of their story and called the funeral home. When she was told there was no account matching the name of Easton Lang, she contacted police. The police investigation revealed the photos that were posted online were not of a dead child. The baby in the photos matched the appearance of a newborn lookalike doll. Casey's husband, Geoffrey Lang, then started to shout out on Facebook saying, we didn't fake anything and that multiple people have seen my wife pregnant and grow the internet nine months. If the cops were smart, they would look at the security cameras at the hospital to show we were there. But police found no record of Casey Lang or Eston Lang at the hospital, coroner's office or memorial or even in the Obigaini clinic. Alan Knight pleaded guilty to stealing 40,000 pounds from his elderly neighbor and pretending to be in a coma for two years to avoid charges. Knight was living on benefits at his home in Swansea, South Wales after claiming he had suffered a massive neck injury. His wife Helen claimed she had to care for her husband who had snapped his neck after falling backwards as he pulled down a garage door. But the whole time he was carrying out an elaborate fraud. He was spotted walking to shop. Knight, picture arriving at court, finally admitted 19 charges of thief and forgery and has now been jailed. An Indonesian woman named Maya Gunawan shared the horror she experienced online to a person who she believed was a friend in need of her help. The incident happened when she met the woman named Lisa in Facebook group that gathered and pulled money together to help each other. Lisa asked to borrow an amount of 300 US dollar from her. 
Maya never met Lisa in person, so she went to her Facebook profile and they didn't have any suspicion about her background that it seems she is a good person with good friends and relatives. Maya and Lisa's daughter even became friends, so without any doubt, she was convinced giving her money to a stranger confidently believed she will give them back. Month passed. Maya was excited to get her money back as the time Lisa was promised to pay. But things getting unclear. When Lisa asked her to extend the due since she don't have any amount to give her yet. Maya was convinced again and asked her to pay the next month. Lisa agreed and have a promising statement. The next month, Maya logged into her Facebook and was shocked to discover Lisa's daughter's post. That Lisa had died in an accident happened on a bridge near her home and that her burial will be in the province of Asi. Picture of her corpse was wrapped in a sheet together with a photo of her body bag being wheeled in the hospital that appears to have been taken from a TV show. Her nose stuffed with tissues making it even more convincing. Learning that it seemed there's no way to get her money back, Maya was initially sad to learn of Lisa's untimely death. However, her suspicions arose when she read that Lisa's burial will be in Asi, which was distance away from where she lived. Curious, she inspected the photos of deceased Lisa closer and realized they did not resemble that of a corpse. Her suspicions were confirmed when she recalled the image of the trolley wheeling a body. She then confronted the daughter of Lisa. The girl denied participating in the wrong death of her mother. In fact, she said her account was hacked by her mother Lisa, who posted the twisted lies. Speaking with the local media, Maya Gunawan said that she's waiting for Lisa to pay back her money and has not gone to the police. She added that she is out of reach. Neta sends her furious at a Thai man and his wife after they fake his own death on Facebook in a bit to scam family members for non-existing funeral costs. The man and his wife posted images of his body on Facebook, complete with tissue stuff in his nose, making them more realistic. The wife captioned the post, Love you, she wrote while telling concerned friends that her husband died about cancer and asthma. When people began asking why he had not previously showed signs of wellness, she replied, he pretended he was okay all along. She then called her husband's mother, who lives in Lampang province, demanding a cash. The mother-in-law sent right away an amount of 600 US dollar to pay for a coffin and vehicle to take her son's body back to his hometown. The family began making funeral arrangements in preparation for the arrival of the body. However, it never arrived. They decided to call the dead man's phone. Surprisingly, someone answered but quickly hung up. The family raised suspicion because the voice sounds familiar. The family had to cancel the funeral service after paying an allegedly unrefundable 60,000 Thai baht or 1,800 US dollar. Although most of the family was furious, the mother didn't hold a grudge towards her son. However, the couple's friends were less forgiving, pointing out the man's alleged long history of lying and deceit. A Honduran man working in the United States pretended to be dead so his wife back home would stop asking him for money. Danny Gonzalez took photos of himself with cotton wool stuffed into his nostrils and a white sheet over his body as if he were lying in the morgue. He then sent them to his wife of two years living in Saba, Honduras, along with a picture of a coffin in the funeral parlor and a message telling her he died from cancer. 
However, the scheme backfired after local media in his hometown started to report his sudden death and the news reached his shock friends and elderly parents. But it didn't take relatives long to realize Gonzalez appeared to be grinning in one of his photos. Others noticed that he appeared to be lying in double bed and the white sheet over his body was actually a pillow cover. When local media found him alive, he admitted the hoax was a ploy to make his wife believe he passed away. He told the news media that his wife would call every week just to ask to send more money. That every Saturday, she would call telling him he should send money. In fact, he had sent her so much already, but the wife insisted for more. He added that the rest of the week, not even a message, his wife would never send photos or ask him anything else. One time his wife called him that the money he sent was stolen and he must send more. But a relative told the media that the news of his death had been a terrible blow for his parents. Other family members slammed him as an ungrateful son, criticized Gonzalez who had been working in the US for years. <laughs> 